Every single day you want to take care of your hygiene. Your hygiene. Your hygiene is so important. And it correlates with your mental stability. If you see like uh, in the word of God, we see several occurrences where hygiene was brought into a spiritual place. Hygiene. You want to take care of your body. Every single day of your life, take showers. If it's possible, do your hair nicely. Take care of your, your body. Drink water. Exercise. If you know that you're getting older in years, Start to pray more for wisdom concerning your body, your health, knowing that there is a spirit that causes believers when they get older to have sicknesses and diseases. So become more cautious. You don't protect your health off of the anointing or, or power alone. You protect your health off of pursuing wisdom for your health. Whatever you don't specify, the receptivity of, you'll never have it. You have to specify your, rec your receptivity for a certain aspect of God. You have to specify your receptivity of a certain aspect of God. If you don't ask for macaroni and cheese in your plate, God will not give it to you. If you don't ask for macaroni and cheese in your plate, God will not give it to you. God's love is not a supply of things that you are not requesting. Some people don't care about their health and so God doesn't give them health. <laughs> You have to specify for the rest of your life, specify and target things in the spirit. You must know your inheritance. Your inheritance is to have perfect health. And so if it's your perfect health, you got to fight the good fight of faith for health. The way that you fight the good fight of faith for health, you receive the wisdom for the body. The wisdom for the spirit is not the same as the wisdom for the body. The wisdom for the body requires different principles, focuses instructions the wisdom for the body is not the same as the wisdom for the spirit or the wisdom for the soul you feed your soul words of life you feed your body words of life plus the laws of life you feed your body the full the word of life but also the laws of life. And one of the laws of life, you exercise. One of the laws of life, you drink a lot of water. I would personally advise that you don't drink a lot of soda. If you do drink soda, it should be every now and again. It should be like a reward thing. Like, it should be like a reward thing. The same way you don't eat buttercream cake all the time or, or, or chocolate cake. Ew, that's nasty. Uh, chocolate, ew, that's nasty. Uh, chocolate, ooh, ew, that's nasty. But buttercream vanilla cake is the best. I don't know what, what, what. If you eat chocolate cake, you must be left-handed because son done, it was an imbalance. It was an imbalance. Was in balance. I'm playing around. I'm playing around. Chocolate cake is, is, is good. All those different type of cakes are good. And mind you, I'm talking about actual cake. Thank you. Thank you. Shop, 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 shop. Shop, shop. Listen. When you 
when you are in 24 hours in a day, find a section in that time to take a shower. Take a shower. Clean your body. You don't have to be with a man to clean your body. You don't have to be with a woman to clean your body. Take those moments to, to, to purify yourself, not only mentally with the word, but physically. Take care of your hygiene. Take care of your hygiene. Take care of your, 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 your hygiene. Pit deodorant on you. Pit deodorant on you. Deodorant is very important. The ordering is very important. I can tell you how demons work through you not putting the ordering on as a man or a woman to attract certain unclean spirits to your life. See, see, this got an actual spiritual implication to it. Pit the ordering on yourself, because if not, you can attract certain spirits that you don't even have uh, knowledge of can attract certain spirits that you don't even know about. Pit deodorant on your body. And also, find one of your favorite sprays and spray it and make sure it don't smell like the toilet. Maybe you get two or three witnesses to validify. Because sometimes your smells might be off. Get, if you're a brother, sometimes men, 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 it take us a little minute to find the correct spray. Not me, but I just pit myself amongst <laughs> amongst the 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 crow feet. I pit myself amongst the crow feet. I go to sleep smelling good because I know that it is an atmosphere for the angels. It's an atmosphere for my mind. So what I'm pressing to you right here is learn the importance of not only spiritual um, upkeep, but physical upkeep. And take care of that aspect and pray for wisdom concerning that, understanding concerning that. Take care of your face. Wash your face. Um, sometimes you can get a lot of bumps in your face because your hair, your hair either... Um, needs to be washed. That's only sometimes. That's not all the time. And that's a small percentage of the time. But sometimes your hair needs to be washed. You need to drink more water. If you drink too much juice or sodas, it can affect your skin and cause your skin to start getting bumpy and stuff like that. Always remember, like the, it means that something may not be agreeing with your body. It doesn't mean that you're unclean. It's something that you're intaking that may be uh, disagreeing with your body. And in small cases, it can be the, the lack of maintenance when you sweat. Sometimes in a day, you may need to wash your face more than once. These are various cases. I'm just showing you because not everybody has the same case. For you, it may, it may be sweat. For, you, for another person, it may be the hair. For another person, it may be the, what they're digesting. And oftentimes, if you lack water, your face can break out. Your face can break out. But take care of your physical body. You don't want to be a believer that has sickness and always believe in God for healing. Start taking authority. In the name of Jesus, I decree that my hands are made whole. I decree that my hands are made whole. No fibromyalgia, no arthritis shall touch my body in Jesus' mighty name. I decree that all my fingers are made whole. My blood cells are clean in the name of Jesus. My blood cells are clean. My brain cells are, are clean. There is no evil, negativity, wrong that's in my brain cells. I have completely perfect brain cells. I decree and I declare that my heart 
is flowing correctly. I have a perfect heart, both spiritually and physically. I decree I will never have a heart attack in Jesus' name. I decree I will never have a stroke in the name of Jesus. A stroke will never touch me. I break the spirit of strokes. I break the spirit of heart attacks in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over headaches. In Jesus' name, my head is free from stress, is free from pressure. High blood pressure in Jesus' name. I command you to become regular. I command all my stress levels to be overtaken by the presence of God. In the name of Jesus, my knees, I command my knees to be whole. In the name of Jesus, my knees are whole by the power of Jesus. My feet is whole by the power of Jesus. My shins are whole by the power of Jesus. I speak to my elbows in Jesus' name. Elbows, I command you to be whole. Fingers, hands, palms, wrist, forearm, biceps. In Jesus' name, I speak to you and I command you to be whole. I command you to function properly in the blessing. I bless my whole physical body and the fruit of my body. I bless every functionality in my body right now in Jesus' name. I receive the wisdom of God, sound wisdom concerning my body, concerning my body, how to stretch, how to exercise, how to eat, how to drink, how to stay in the flow of being healthy. I receive the wisdom for, for being healthy. I receive wisdom on what to touch when I'm in public. I receive wisdom on what to touch when I'm in public. Saints, these people buying face masks, face masks was one of the most stupid things that came along with this whole thing. I just want to say this to you. Face masks, hand sanitizers, all these different things. These things will not protect you from a plague. This is spiritual. Only people that are led by the spirit will be protected from what's on the earth. It is nonsense. There are people that are doing hand sanitizer. They're wearing masks and is, they're still sick. I'm not sick. I can walk past somebody with coronavirus and it don't bother me because that demon is for them. It's not for me. And then there's another bracket of believers that think, oh, let's pray this virus. Let's pray this, pray this virus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can pray the virus all we want. But as long as you keep on eating bats and rats and snakes, you're going to have the spiritual demons that come from hell that cause the death of man, that cause the plagues upon the earth is going to continue. So... This, 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 this has everything to do with being led by the Holy Spirit. The same way that the Holy Spirit wasn't leading those people to eat bats and rats and snakes and all this, all these animals. If you have followed me, I have told you that they were demons. So people of God, even you can look at what I have taught you and see how I was preparing you for the definition of what was going to happen in our day. I spoke to you in literal terms and did teachings and told you how a bat, how a rat, how a snake, how all these different animals. And I, I mentioned bats and, and pigs. I mentioned swine. I told you, and, and even cats. I mentioned to you how these animals are demonic, how they symbolize demonic creatures. I spoke about it to you so that you can understand. So the fact that people were eating these things, they are doing sacrifices to the devil. The fact that they were doing these things, it shows how they was eating from the table of the devil and they invoked these evil spirits to come from the gates of hell. These evil spirits cannot touch 
people that are not living in the gates of hell. But watch this here. If you are living in the gates of hell, you put yourself in jeopardy to be touched by them. If you're a fearful person, if you're an anxious person, if you're somebody that doesn't follow God and you always make mistakes and you always need to apologize, you can jeopardize yourself and put yourself in a bracket to receive the curses of men that's in rebellion also. So, so this is a quickening factor for even you as a believer to start being led by the spirit. Look at what the whole generation is magnifying right now. Caution, 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 be cautious, be cautious, caution, caution. But this is what the spirit of God been telling the people of God for ages. Be careful who you touch. Be careful who you talk to. Be careful. This whole social distancing. I've been telling you all this in JHM, all this ministry. I've been telling you to be careful who you talk to. Even in JHM, I've been telling you about social distancing. So the world is just coming into alignment with what the prophet been saying. They talking about social distancing and stop gathering. I've been talking about that for, for, for years. I've been telling you that God is not in the church. I've been telling you that God not in these pews with these religious people. I've been telling you that for ages. That's why they all shut down. There's not a pastor in this world that can deny the fact that there is a shutdown with the system that was made by them because God never intended us to be in no church building every Sunday, every Wednesday and have all these different rituals. He didn't intend that. They made that possible because according to their understanding, they took the move of the spirit and said that it is more legit if we have a building. And that's what people have always fought. Where's the building? Where's the building? Now they can't go to a building. And, and if, they, if they try to go to a building, there's some type of regulation. You got to have 10 people. You got to have 50 people. There's different type of regulations. Because God never intended that. Apostle Paul said we do the work of an evangelist. Yes, people of God, we get together every day. But how my ministry is run, I promise you, when you get to heaven, you'll find out that Prophet Joshua Holmes was running ministry the way that the Holy Ghost wanted. See, I'm a real prophet. I'm not a pastor. I'm a prophet that pastors. And prophets, we know. Apostles, we know the foundational way that God wants things to be done. When there is an apostle, when there is a prophet in the land, you will know how the Father wants the gospel, how the Spirit is supposed to flow. And the Holy Spirit never intended for people to get stagnated with a building. He wanted you to do the work of an evangelist. That's why I have been telling some of you all as much as possible, if you are around a lot of people, if you meet a lot of people, sometimes you may feel the spirit leading you. Minister to them about Jesus. They can't put their hands on you. And that's why I have told you every now and again, I'll meet up with JHM. I'll do an annual conference. I'll do something in a year, maybe two, two times, three times. I'll, I'll meet you in a year and I'll empower you. But I don't have you like that in a building. That's how Jesus moved when he was on earth. You tell me, where was Jesus' church? Tell me, tell me. Jesus was on a mountain. Jesus was on a mountain. Jesus was on a mountain. The Bible talk about a beatitude, that he's talking about blessed are the, uh, 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 are the meat for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the poor in spirit. He was on a mountain. Where was Jesus' church when he was moving on the earth? That's what man and Paul crouched before he died. The Lord had also spoke that same thing to Paul Crouch. Some of you all don't understand that the gospel has already been preached all across the world. The Lord spoke to me and those of you all that have been following me for years. I prophesied before Paul Crouch, before Jan Crouch died, I prophesied that they would die when they had put their names on the prayer list and all the preachers in the world were praying for Paul and Jan in their time of transition. I said that I saw their departure. I saw their ascension into heaven. I saw that they was not going to remain on earth because God had told me long ago that the preaching of the gospel had went across the world. Every part of the earth had already received the gospel. And he said, son, do you know what I'm doing? Off of my mercy, I keep even sending the gospel in rotation years later, decades later, because I'm giving man a chance to repent. Years later, rather, years later, he's giving man the chance to repent. 
even years after they died. He's still giving man the opportunity to hear the gospel over and over again. That's why it says uh, uh, David was saying in Psalms, the Lord has spoken once, but twice have I heard it. That's why David said that. He said, the Lord has spoken once, but twice have I heard it. How did the Lord speak once, but he heard it twice? Because the word is going in rotation. That's what has been happening. The whole world has heard about Jesus, but now they're hearing about Jesus in rotation. Even David understood the times that we will come inside, that there will be the word spoken one time, but you'll hear it twice. And twice doesn't mean two in the spirit. Twice means that it will repetitively come to you. You will have various opportunities to heed it. Twice does not mean two times. In the spirit realm, it means that it will come more and more. It'll come again and again and again. And that's what has been happening. That's what has been happening. The reason why President Trump has been in office, he, they couldn't remove him because he is a part of the end times. God picked him to be a part of the end times. We had Satan in the office. Now we have Jesus in the office. And some people will look at it and say, oh, this man is not Jesus. He's not that. No, no, no. We had Satan in the office. We, now we got Jesus in the office. We had Satan in the office. We, now we have Jesus in the office. We had lawlessness in the office. Now we have righteousness in the office. What's shocking to me is that black people have spoke for years talking about slaves, slaves and how men oppress them. And the minute that a black man get into office is, is where all sin breaks loose, which shows why this race of people have been on lockdown for most of the generation because they're hard headed, stubborn and very wicked in the heart. There's a reason why as soon as a black man take the office that we have lawlessness enter into the earth, that now we have homosexuality and the things that are abominable to God start being least through the hearts of men is a reason to show you why black people haven't been in power. So you always mark that and remember that because to be a president over United States of America is the highest place in the natural that you can have is bigger than a doctor is bigger than a senator is is bigger to be the president mean that you are the leader over the whole land. And when a black person got it, they dropped the ball. I don't know why all these black people felt so in support of Obama. Obama didn't do nothing for black people, but created this dumb Obamacare that made it hard for you to get your taxes. It made it hard for you to get medicine. It made it hard for you to do things that was normal. It prevented you from having the favor that you had before it ever stepped into the, the earth. When you're in the spirit, you'll start appreciating God for President Trump. When you're in the righteousness of God, you'll start realizing that who else would you want in office at such a time as this? Who else? Since the reason why the whole Illuminati, the government, the, the one world governmental system, why they hate President Trump because he don't have the same spirit that they have. He calling their unrighteousness unrighteousness. He not agreeing with their systems. He's going against. He's exposing the Democrats for what they have been for all these ages. They have destroyed this nation with laws in different mindsets and agendas that they have placed within the people. And he refused to go along with that pattern. That's what has happened. People will always hate somebody that goes against the normality and the routine. If you're a prophet, you're a preacher, you come on the scene and you don't got 15 spiritual dusty fathers, you not your father, not no dusty bishop. You don't got no dusty old man telling you old time religion that ain't got no power. They tell you that you're not legit. If you're not ug underneath no ugly old man that ain't got no power, all he got is a form of godliness. If you're not underneath the ugly fool 
you're not really a man of God. But that's why we don't got no real man of God, because they underneath fools. They underneath men that just had a form of godliness. They don't know Jesus for real. And then we got another generation. They don't know Jesus for real. And they preaching to the people wrong. They telling people about the Lord, about stuff that they don't even understand. And it was the same sin of the Pharisees. They was talking about the law. They was talking about the word. And here come Jesus on the scene and they're attacking Jesus. It, as it was then, it's still today. They are preaching the word, but when the word comes, they can't see. They can't understand because it's fake. The Lord told me, he said, a false prophet is not somebody that just prophesying and dot, dot, dot. He said, a false prophet is somebody that is preaching and they don't really know me in private. They don't have a real relationship with me. He said, that's what a false prophet is. People talking about false prophet, false prophet off of every other thing other than the basis that this person is acting like Jesus sent them out and they don't know him. They don't talk to him. He don't talk to them. They just don't know him. That's why a lot of people are not having accuracy in their pursuit of God and nothing is happening in their hearts because that the only way for that to happen is if you get to know him for real. That's the only way a person can be transformed is if they personally get to know Jesus for real. And saints, the world will continue to have birth and pains. Your job is to stay in God's wisdom and not be affected by these ever. You are a dominator. And this above all times is the best time for you to exercise your dominion. This is the best time for you to show forth because the earth is crying out for the manifestations. It's groaning for the manifestations of the sons of God. Did you hear that? The earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons. And you know what sons do? Dominate, decree, deliver, defend. Sons are decreeing spirits. We don't speak about things. We speak to things. And it changes at the voice of our word. Start becoming a Korean spirit and speak to things. I remember when I was in a time of financial poverty, being financially poor, I spoke to my bank account. There was times where I looked in my refrigerator, didn't see anything. I spoke to my refrigerator. I bet you in less than no time, that refrigerator was full. You speak to things. You speak to money. You speak to your health. You speak to your mind. Some people have never spoken to their mind. That's why your mind is so junky and dumb. You got a dumb mind because you got dumb words coming out your mouth. You're not talking to your mind. You never took the time to speak to your mind. When I went through trials, I would speak to my mind. I would look at myself. I would go into a random bathroom and speak the word to myself because I wasn't going to let myself be tainted by the situation I was in. I was going to change the situation to be tainted by me. I wasn't going to be tainted by the trial. I was going to taint the trial. The trial wasn't going to manipulate my mind. I was going to manipulate the mind of the trial. If a situation can change you, it shows how weak you are. If you can't change a situation, but that situation can change you, it shows you how weak you are. How powerful are you? Because power is not dependent on leaning on a thing on this earth. It's dependent on leaning on God himself. 
That's how powerful you are. You're powerful when you're not leaning on a thing. You're leaning on the king. It's not about a natural thing holding you up. Even the word of God, it charged rich people. It said, don't put your trust in uncertain riches. The word of God declared, I believe in Proverbs chapter 11. I think it was talking about how riches won't deliver you in the day of wrath. Why was it talking about that like that? Because when the wrath of God is there, if all you have is riches, if you don't have revelation, if you don't have relationship, it's not going to deliver you. It says righteousness delivers you from death. That means that you can't just be rich. You got to be doing things the way you got to be thinking things the way that God wants you to think. So even you becoming rich is not just you being delivered. For you to have revelation and relationship, that's when you're going to be delivered. Because only righteousness delivers from death. So you, you don't even want to get your riches just because God pitying you. You don't want to get your riches just because God looking at you with compassion. You want to get your riches through righteousness. Because righteousness is what delivers from death. Righteousness is what delivers from plagues. Curses, consequences. This is the time. This is the time. You start intentionally taking care of every part of your being. Take care of your body. 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 And don't damage your vessel. By making wrong decisions with your health, don't damage your vessel. Let God be able to use your vessel for a very long time. Let him use you. I'm not going to leave this earth with no daggone sickness. I refuse. I'm not going to leave this earth broke. I'm not going to leave this earth with no sickness. I'm not going to leave this earth with no struggle. I'm going to leave this earth as a champion. And I'm not going to leave this earth because I died. I'm going to leave the earth because I chose to go. It, it, my whole life is about intention. I did it on purpose. I'm doing it on purpose. I'm not going to leave this earth because something took me out. I'm not going to have a diagnosis. I'm going to leave because I chose to go. Apostle Paul was making his decision. He said, I can either stay. I can either die. I can choose. That's the life of the apostolic, of the prophetic. You choose when you go. Elijah chose that he was going. That's how you, that's how you have to learn how to operate in that aspect. Choose this day. Choose life. Don't let, don't, stop acting like life going to choose you. And saints, I'm not trying to get Jesus to run after me. Some of you are. Jesus got to run after you. I don't want Jesus to run after me. It's my turn to run after the father. It's my turn to run after him. Stop making Jesus have to die all over again to get your attention. Stop letting Jesus have to suffer to get your mind in the right place that it's supposed to be. He already did his job. Now you do your job. Stop acting like you need him to run after you and pity you. It's your time to, for you to pity Jesus. Pity the fact that he was crucified. Pity the fact that they spit on him. Pity the fact that he was embarrassed. He was naked. He was on a cross, embarrassed, naked, full of shame, full of embarrassment, and he stood right there for you and didn't change. Now it's your turn. To take up your cross and follow him. Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow him. Because when he could have turned away his cup, he chose to drink his cup for you. What cup will you choose to drink for him? What cup? Stop running away from your cup. I got to the place I have compassion, but I don't really feel bad for the crosses that God picked for people because God picks your cross dependent on what type of spirit you have. 
God picks your cross dependent on what type of spirit you have. And sometimes you don't know what type of spirit you are. He picked the cross to break you according to what type of spirit you carry. If your spirit is a stubborn spirit, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a blind spirit, is a dumb spirit, he going to pitch you through a lot more training than others. He pick your cross on what type of rebel you are that you don't even know about. That's how he picked your cross. So the Lord, he merciful, but he know why he let you go through certain things because that's what is required to break you. Sometimes you see stuff happen to people and you be like, oh, why did this happen to them? You don't know what type of spirit that is. That need to happen to them because they proud. That need to happen to them because they high minded. They puffed up. They think they all that. And when stuff happen like that, it breaks them. It make them realize that you ain't she. You look at people, you think that they're innocent. You don't know what type of spirit that is. Some people grew up with a silver spoon in their mouth, a gold spoon in their mouth. They never experienced nothing. They thought that they was all that, and God used the situations to break them. What do you think began to happen to Lot's wife? She had experienced luxury all that time. Now God let Satan fight the family. Now she's saying, curse God and die. Why is that her reaction? Because she wasn't really in there. Her heart was not right. And the cross is revealing to her that you was just here for things. You was not here because you want to serve the living God. You was not here because you was a woman after God's own heart. You was just here because things was good. Her first reaction is not, baby, let's pray. Her first reaction is not, let's fast. Let us go seek God. Her first reaction is, F Jesus. So do you think that that was the Holy Ghost at work inside of that woman? All those times, Job thought that that woman was a virtuous woman. He didn't know who that woman was. The same thing with Saul. Samuel loved Saul. Samuel enjoyed Saul. Samuel listened to God about Saul. But now he tells Saul, kill all the Amalekites. Look at what comes out of Saul. Stubbornness, rebellion. And then Saul is not even repenting. Saul is going up to Samuel and trying to deceive Samuel like he did something good. He trying to trick Samuel out of his accuracy with God and make Samuel think that Samuel is wrong for even correcting Saul about what he did. But nothing is revealed in Saul's heart until the cross comes. So God picks our crosses based upon what type of spirit we are. I have compassion on people, but I know that the cross that God picked for them is in alignment with what type of spirit they carry. And they need to go through that cross because they need to be broken before God. People don't know how to talk to Jesus. They don't know how to talk to the king. They don't know how to talk to the father. That's why we have so many marriages being divorced and so many children being distorted and so many women being broken and so many men being deceived because there's not a cross that people are choosing to carry correctly. They're running from their cross and they're not letting God train them. And that's why God will pick certain experiences to knock you down. God does it all the time. He does it all the time. He'll pick something to show you. 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 What's inside of you? He'll pick your cross to reveal you to you. There could be times where people, you believe in your heart that you're so innocent. You don't know what's inside of you until you come around a man of God. Some of you all been following dusty preachers all your life. You've been following men that just got a form of godliness. So no demon inside of you could have been activated. No demon inside of you could have showed up. You just been following the form of godliness. You just been in those churches with four people and y'all talking about y'all serving God and it's only the pastor and his whole family. You never been around a true man of God where Jesus done took over. 
So there's going to be things that start to get touched when you're around that man that Jesus took over that never went, was touched when you was around those religious groups and those organizations because they did not have the spirit. All they had was a form of godliness. Yes, they talked about the word, but it was the letter without the spirit. It was the letter without the spirit. You heard Bible scriptures proceed from that man mouth, but it was just the letter without the spirit. So when you get around the spirit, the spirit going to deal with you differently. The spirit going to talk to you differently. The spirit going to start telling you the truth. The spirit going to start testing you and challenging you. And that's why you start having an attitude. That's why you start feeling angry and upset because God is showing you who you are. He's showing you stuff that need to be changed. He's showing you things that you need to pray about. You need to pray about wisdom. You need to pray about patience. You need to pray about humility and the fear of God. Because when you fear God, you'll sit there and let God train you and you'll let him teach you what you need to know because it's not about your comfort zone. It's about Christ conforming you to who he is. You want you 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 want a house. But God can't even control your spiritual house. You want a car, but God can't even control your spiritual car. You want currency money, but God can't control your spiritual currency. Your, your faith. Your mindset, there's an exchange going on. There's a transaction going on. He can't have the spiritual money, the spiritual currency, but you want the financial currency. God picks your cross based upon what you need to be delivered from. God picks your cross Depending on what he wants you to learn. Jesus learned obedience by the things that he suffered. Not by the things that he enjoyed. Your enjoyment is not a teacher. Your enjoyment is not a teacher. Pleasure is not a teacher. He learned obedience by the things he suffered. Suffering is always something you would avoid if it was in your power. Suffering is something that you would hide from if it was up to you. Suffering is anything that will come your way that you would try to escape. And those are the very things that God will tell you, go hide by that brook still. I don't want you to move from the brook, Sheriff. Stay right there. I want to say this. That Sheriff was assigned to test Elijah. Wow. Cherith was assigned to test Elijah. Cherith was The semester, the professor that was teaching Elijah another level of patience, another level of trust. And Cherith was going to only be effective if Elijah said yes. If you don't say yes, God going to hide you by the brook Cherith and Cherith not going to change you. God going to hide you by the brook Cherith and nothing going to happen. You still going to be the same person. You still going to have the same mind and you still going to have the same level. But let Cherith do its work. Let Cherith do its work. Let Cherith take over. 
and let the atmosphere of Cherith, because there's a reason why God is telling you to hide there. God will never tell you to hide if it's not the shadow of the Almighty. So it's not just Cherith, but is but is he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide underneath the shadow of the Almighty. It's the shadow of the Almighty in disguised at Cherith. So while you at Cherith, if you seek to run from Cherith, you seek to run from the shadow of the Almighty God. And why is it his shadow? It shows you that he's standing next to you, that he done took you over. And so now his shadow has become your shadow. His shadow has become your shadow. And guess what happens when God's shadow become your shadow? Your battles become his battles. When God's shadow becomes your shadow, your battles become his battles. And that's when God begins to fight for you. It's in the place where you choose oneness. It's in the place where you choose oneness.